Lots of new cities are being planned, but ecologically and socially speaking, most of them are designed to fail. If they are not designed to end poverty, they won't thrive. If they are not designed to end the mass extinction, there will be no future in which to thrive. Here are five ways to look at a city through the lens of ecology so you can tell whether it's future-proof. First, make sure that any new urban areas are built on degraded land, not pristine land. So many new cities are being built on undeveloped land, savanna, prairie, jungle, marshes, or coral reefs. Of course, this land is cheap to buy, but it's also incredibly valuable to the planet in terms of biodiversity. Bulldozing these environments for construction is a leading cause of species extinctions. What can we do instead? We can acquire land that has been severely damaged by past farming, grazing, mining, or housing projects. We can build on a small part of that and restore the rest to wilderness. Second, the city should have no detached houses or garages. These just suck energy and waste a ton of space, and they're such a pain to maintain. Instead, it would have elegant brownstones, townhouses, or apartments with lavish ground floor amenities. A prior video showed why these are safer, quieter, healthier, more affordable, and fun to live in. Third, the city should have no cars, roads, or parking. In urban environments, car infrastructure uses up to 70% of the land. In rural environments, roadways destroy, fragment, and pollute habitats. So the rule is, no cars. What can we use instead? Sheltered paths for pedestrians and bicycles, as well as trams, metros, and rail. As we saw in episode four, these use up to 97.5% less space than car infrastructure to move more people and goods in far greater safety at much lower cost. Fourth, the city should grow food and fiber on rooftops and in the landscapes where people live. Local gardens can grow 20 times more food per square meter than industrial farming while maintaining or improving soil fertility for thousands of years. The food you get is much fresher and more nutritious, and with greenery everywhere, you live in a beautiful garden, not a concrete hellscape. Fifth, the city should be energy self-sufficient. Energy-efficient housing and public transit make this four times easier to do with solar panels and emerging wind and storage technologies. Here's a challenge for you. On this five-star scale, how does your city measure up? Let us know in the comments, and don't worry, most cities are zero stars. These are the places with the greatest opportunity to make a difference. Just realize that a city with less than five stars will fail ecologically and economically, but a five-star city has at least a good chance to thrive in three ways. First, its economy will thrive because removing all that car infrastructure frees up valuable space and cuts costs, so people have more money to spend on other things. Second, its residents will thrive because they enjoy better amenities, a greener, quieter, safer environment, and far lower transportation and healthcare costs. And finally, the planet will thrive because well-designed cities can shrink our footprint by 96%, allowing us to restore wild habitat in the surrounding areas. That's what ends the mass extinction. Okay then, how do we actually start building five-star cities so that you and I can move in as soon as possible? We'll discuss that in the next video.